Hi, it is Cindy from Code for Couples. Welcome back to Code for Couples. And today I am talking with Candace Hutton, who uh, is an LMFT in California. She's actually in Orange County. She and I got connected um, over Facebook in a group. And we were talking and realized that we had this connection with our husbands and who her, your husband is also a law enforcement officer. Yes, uh, he is. Yeah, out there in California. And so then we were talking about things and I said, you know, it'd be really great to bring you on because uh, she has a little bit of a different experience. Uh, she has, uh, her husband's gone from a smaller department to a larger department. Mm -hmm. And on top of that is she is a new mommy. Uh, and yes, so that, that transition and so we thought we would just I'd I thought I would bring her on and talk about some of the commonalities and some of the things that we see as therapists but also some of the struggles that we go through um, working or being with I should say not working <laughs> with but, but being mm -hmm. with our cop husbands so welcome Candice thank, thank you, you. Here. I appreciate that um, tell me a little bit, first start me off with um, how did you, I know you like to work with first responders as well. I do. So tell me a little bit about your journey as far as wanting to work with first responders and being a first responder wife. Yeah, definitely. So I've been married to my husband for five years and he's been a police officer the whole time. And so I haven't known anything different. Yeah. Which I think is good in some ways, but then also brings challenges in some ways. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I married him, he had just switched over to the larger department. And one thing that I really love about that department is they're very family oriented and really support the family. Mm -hmm. And so at his badge pinning, uh, when he got sworn in there, I yeah. pinned his badge and they gave me a book for uh, police wives. And that was really awesome. I loved that. Um, but when I was reading the book, I realized that I, there are a lot of things I had to learn about being mm. a police wife and about how to connect with police officers and mm -hmm. really to get them. Mm -hmm. I think there were a lot of things I just, they're so, it's so different being a, a police wife. And so I, one way that I try and love my husband is like very action oriented. And so um, he, I don't know, he really feels loved and supported through me taking interest in his profession. And so yes. that's how I got started along trying to understand what it looks like and what it means to be married to a police officer and to do it well. Yeah. And through that, I became an MFT. And that is when I started- Marriage and Family Therapist, for those yes. people who don't know, right? So here in California, that's a Marriage and Family Therapist. And uh, the funny thing is, I actually don't work a whole ton with couples and marriages, but more with individuals. Okay. That's more my niche. And I realized through just being friends with police officer wives that we all kind of have the same struggles and the same joys. And so then I became passionate about walking alongside those individuals. Mm, I love that you said walking alongside of them because it really does sound like, okay, I'm just there to, to help you through this journey as opposed to, I'm going to tell you what to do. Exactly. It's, it's nice. <laughs> so do you remember what the book was? Yes. The book was, I love a cop. Oh yes. Yes. Totally on my list. I recommend that to so many people. Yes, I love, I a love cop. it. And, and I think that's Ellen Kirschman. Um, I believe so. Wrote the book. Um, who also wrote, by the way, I don't know if you know, she also wrote a book called Counseling Cops. So oh. for any therapists out there that want to work with uh, law enforcement um, and first responders, there's a lot of similarities to the two. But um, Counseling Cops is Counseling Cops is a book that she wrote if you're in the helping profession and want to work with them for sure. Um, yeah, that's an awesome book. I am so thrilled that that just tells me that that department is really family oriented. So, so it's really cool that they were able to incorporate you into the ceremony and then give you some support. Do they have support? You had talked to me about that. He was on the motorcycle unit yes. there in California, right? And you said that they had a really good group of a really good support there for his motorcycle. I don't want to call it a gang. <laughs> his, his motorcycle. Um, um, division. 
Division. There yeah, you go. division. Um, yeah, so they don't have like a designated group for the motorcycle officers, but I feel like the group just in general, they're, they're like a brotherhood. They're all mm-hmm. super close. And I think it's like that in general, but I've really noticed it within the motor division. Oh, that is awesome. That is awesome. And I think it's important to have that connection with other wives if possible. You know, some of us, some of us don't connect with wives within the same department. And that's why I love the fact that there's some Facebook groups out there now, which is, I mean, we connected through a professional Facebook group, but there's other Facebook groups out there to support uh, spouses. In, yeah, in any definitely. Of so one of the big changes that you had in your relationship was having a baby who is now four months, four and a half months old. Yeah. Four and a half oh. months. Feels like oh. yesterday. <laughs> How, how has that changed, um, or I should say, what has that changed for y'all in your relationship? Yeah, it's been really fun and really crazy all at once. I would say one thing that it's changed is just the time that we have with each other. Mm-hmm. Our time is so limited with each other, and we really have to be intentional about carving out time for just us two. Yeah. And it's actually not even always possible or realistic. And so really getting creative with communicating and having time in the day or in the week to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing it's changed or just brought to my attention is our different relational styles. And so, yeah, so he being a police officer, I mean, is very black and white and has his specific ways to parent. (laughs) And then me being a therapist, I would say I have my specific ways to parent because I feel like I know best with all the research and all of that. But for me, there's more room for discussion and talking it out where we're, for him, I think there's one clear way to do things and one clear way to not do things. Mm, I, 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 yes. And I think that kind of mindset goes in so many different ways, not just in parenting. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of times in that mindset, there is a, okay, what do you need me to do? Let me just fix it. Yes. Let me, just tell me what to do. Or it, where is he saying, no, this is right. This is wrong. And you're like, well, what about all the gray? <laughs> Absolutely. And I think that, I mean, has always come up when we've had conflict or arguments or whatnot. It's like, he's like, oh, I'm doing that wrong. Okay, I'll fix it. And I'm like, but wait, it's okay. We can talk about it. Well, and and I think as a as a spouse, part of what we need to understand is that if their world is all gray, they can't make those decisions that they need to make on a regular basis. They need yes. to have some black and white, right or wrong, because if there's a gray, then they will hesitate on making that decision. But in our personal relationships... <laughs> Let, let's talk about this. Where does this come from? Is there room for negotiation? Mm-hmm. What's meaningful to you? And we're wanting to have these types of conversations. And they're like, yes. yeah, no, what, what do you want? Let me just yeah. do this. Yeah. He's so. like, you don't like that. Okay. I won't do that anymore. And I'm like, right. but if you like doing it, keep doing it. Just tell me why. <laughs> right. Just give me some purpose. Give me some reason. Yes. The thing that I, I don't know about for you, what I worry about sometimes in that decision making of like, just, okay, you want me to fix this? That's fine. Is I, I worry about it leading to resentment down the line Mm -hmm. and feeling like we tell them what to do or they don't have a choice. And so that's what I worry about down the line. I've got 12 years ahead of you. So (laughs) in this relationship, so I, I don't know, do you have any concerns about that type of resentment coming down the line? Yeah, I would say at times I worry about the resentment, but then I'm also thinking um, because he is more black and white and then I'm more a of a discussion-based type Mm -hmm. personality. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to seem like I'm always like nagging or bringing up an issue because um, I – because I'm the more of the communicator, I often am the one that I'm bringing up the issue. So then it seems like I'm the only one that has the issues. So part of the way that you mitigate that is kind of pick and choose what's really important yes. to you then is what you wind up doing. That, and I think 
even just a perspective shift. And so really trying to implement the empathy that I have with my clients, with him. And so really trying to put myself in his shoes and where he's coming from. And even hearing what you just said a few minutes ago about their split second decisions, and that's why they have to be black and white. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what just reminding yourself of that um, will do. It helps me to relate and to understand him so much better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that perspective taking and that empathy, like you're saying, is so important. I totally Mm -hmm. get that. And it's funny how it comes more natural in the counseling room, but it's just as important in our, or more important, actually, in my opinion, with our spouses. Yes, yes. One thing that I tell a lot of people is a lot of times, and it's not an excuse so much as it is an explanation. Unfortunately, um, Many times our, the people who we love the most are the ones that we get the most crap from. Mm-hmm. Um, and in, in fact, I did a, a podcast episode. I called it kicking the cat, but it's about anger displacement. Like people, when, when you come home or when, when our, when our spouses come home and they're frustrated about all the things that they can't control. And then we kind of right. overflow from it. Um, and, and so extending that. That doesn't give it. A, that doesn't mean that we have to always accept it in the sense that, like, oh, that's my job. I have to take all that on. Right. But that perspective taking maybe changes the way we choose to communicate with them. Definitely, so. and then they feel more heard in turn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious. A lot of times when officers have children, mm-hmm. there's also this like, oh my gosh, how am I going to protect this kid now? <laughs> yes. And, and I can't have like, there's all these other things that go with it. Like my kid can't be one of those kids. Have y'all had any of that conversation or discussion yet? Any of those fears that come with being a, in law enforcement and having a kid? Definitely. And on top of that, we had a daughter. And so... Oh, I feel bad for her. She has a cop and a therapist as her parents. I feel like she's getting away with nothing. Um, but yes, and those conversations started actually when we talked about wanting to start a family. Um, I think that my husband, I mean, he sees so much and he mm-hmm. sees so much of um, kids who are in trouble that he was really concerned just about raising a child in today's world. I think Mm -hmm. it's just, he sees so much of the dark side of today's world. And so uh, we constantly have conversations about that. And um, he's even shared with me how calls that he goes on now with children uh, are much more difficult for him because he can relate on a much deeper level. Yeah. He has that connection now. Yes. And so it's like, oh crap, this could be, my kid. Right, right. And, and there's so many that's, and it's important that he's talking to you about that. That's great that because in that there's some resiliency and some, some bounce back. Um, and they prevent some of those symptoms from PTSD. So definitely, yeah, keeping that door open. I'm curious, I don't know if you'll share or not, what were some of the things that the conversations that you had prior to getting pregnant and talking about what those worries were? Yeah, you know, I think um, for me, I'm more, my personality, I'm more extroverted, spontaneous, go with the flow. And so for me, there wasn't a whole lot of worries, which that's my own issues there. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but for him, um, he was worried about being able to provide financially. Um, mm-hmm. He was worried about really just not for lack of a better phrase, but messing up our daughter. Mm -hmm. He wants, he was really concerned about raising her right. And what is the right way? um, What is not the right way? How do we make sure um, that she is protected, but not sheltered completely and in a bubble? Yeah. Those were some of the main conversations. Yeah. That's so you're talking a lot about, I think what most parents would talk about, but then I think there's always that angle and that slant on I've seen the horrible things. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think anybody, even like child welfare workers, counselors, social workers, as well as first responders, medical people, like there's this whole helping profession that I think sees the other side and thinks, Oh God, I, I, how do I prevent that from happening? And in actuality, there's not much you can, I mean, you could do some, Totally, um, but 
God, there's that free will thing that we have and like they get to make their own choices. I, which How is scary. That? <laughs> and the other thing too is I, I don't really see a lot of outward anxiety in my husband. Like mm-hmm. he's pretty contained and self-controlled and I don't know. I just don't see a ton of glaring anxiety, but I would say preparing to have our daughter was when I saw some of the anxiety come out and even just this desire mm-hmm. to have control that's maybe not even realistic. Yes. And then I think about exactly that ties right in with their profession. Yes. And I mean, a lot of people want to have control, right? But for, for officers, for firefighters, for our first responders in general, they need to have control of a mm-hmm. scene, right? Because they if they don't have control of the scene, it's, it goes bad. So, yes. so good gosh, raising, raising a kid is incredibly vulnerable and mm-hmm. talk about bringing up all kinds of fear. That's for sure. Definitely. Um, yeah. So you have, you know, working on those parenting issues, working on those relationship, changing relationships or, or the change in the relationship. I can't talk. Um, <laughs> so there's, there's a couple of things that are going along there. Um, it has it impacted y'all in any other way besides y'all kind of figuring out when do we get that time together? Does he have any worries about uh, childcare or worries about, um, um, like babysitters or anything like that? Cause I know sometimes, I mean, I mean a lot of us yeah. do anyway, but sometimes yeah. it's like exponential when you see all the bad stuff. So totally. So we've been really fortunate to have grandparents able to watch and uh, then yeah. um, my schedule kind of is opposite of his, but we still get, he, he has great hours right now, which I'm really fortunate for. So um, he actually gets to stay home with the baby while I'm seeing clients, which is really fun and a unique experience for him. But I can definitely see that being a struggle for police officers um, in terms of childcare. I would say yeah. something else that's kind of good is it's actually been really fun for me to see him become a dad. And I think having a, a child has brought out um, like a lightheartedness to him. Mm. I would say his anxiety was more the preparation and the unknown. Mm-hmm. And then once we had the baby, um, I've seen just a really, really fun side come out for him, which has been cool. Yeah. It's so nice to, I, I've seen it's, it's, we don't have children, mm-hmm. but we have lots of other kids that we play with around the world. Not mm-hmm. around the world. What am I saying? We have lots of other kids <laughs> that we get to interact with um, nieces, nephew, um, other friends, kids, and things like that. And it's so, it is fun if they can let their guard down and just kind of go back to being that kid, it, it, I think it provides some balance for them. It gives totally. them a, maybe even an excuse to let that out. Mm-hmm. Um, and they don't have to be so serious. So yeah, he's a total jokester and like already pesters her and she loves <laughs> it. And I can tell that they're going to have a really sweet relationship and he's going to drive her nuts all at once. That is really cool. Yes. Um, if you had to give a piece of advice mm-hmm. to other uh, spouses. What do you think that would be? Yeah, I think you kind of touched on it at the beginning, but if I had to give a piece of advice to other spouses, I think it would be to really um, try and put yourselves in your Um, law enforcement spouse's shoes Mm -hmm. and um, recognize that they don't have the type of job where they can just leave work at work. Um, They do bring it home. It's a part of who they are. I really feel after talking to multiple um, police spouses that their line of work is not just a job, but it's a calling. And Mm. so Um, If they're going to live out their purpose, they can't just turn it on and off at work and at home. It's probably the only area where they can't be black and white. Yeah, Uh, it, it does come home. And so if I could give any advice, it's that once you are able to see and once they're able to see that um, it's a part of their identity and who they are and that that's a good thing. I think that you, uh, 
spouses will be able to respect their uh, husbands so much more for what they are or what they do and who they are. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. think um, once you're able to kind of just see the other side and why maybe um, they relate or connect the way they do, um, they then feel that. And I think that it's a, it's a pattern, it's a cycle and it's a good cycle. Yeah. Like that reciprocation, mm-hmm. the fact that you give them that understanding and yes. then maybe they can give you some of that understanding back in return too. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's and totally. And I've noticed that when I provide understanding and put myself in my husband's shoes, he feels a lot more um, connected to me. And so mm-hmm. then he relates different in a way, different for the better in a way where I do feel more connected. Mm, mm, yeah. You know, when we're talking about that empathy and that connection, mm-hmm. I, I think that is a struggle for a lot of people, but I think it's a little bit, it extends a little bit greater almost <laughs> in their mm-hmm. profession. Do you have, how do you, when you're working with somebody or when you're, if somebody was to ask you about how, to, well, how do you get that empathy from your spouse? What would, how would you answer that? Yeah, I think that that is, the biggest challenge. Um, I think one is if you are feeling upset or frustrated, it's going to be really hard to access that empathy. And so maybe to take a break, to take a deep breath, walk away until you can have the perspective that you're needing to be able to shift to what they may be experiencing. Mm -hmm. I also think to develop that empathy, it does take um, a selfless mindset. And so I think you have to tell yourself, okay, right now it's not about me. It's about trying to understand where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. And once you take on that selfless mindset, then I think you're able to then understand uh, maybe where that other side is. Yeah. So, and that's, that's great advice as far as, or or great wisdom, however you want to look at that and and how to do it. Empathy is definitely a skill. It's Mm -hmm. not something we're born with. And so it takes a lot of effort and energy to connect and do that. Um, And that's important with not just our spouses, but our kids Mm -hmm. and our family and friends. And so like as a new parent, it'll be interesting for you to see, okay, I can extend this. How do I, how do I help him extend that as well? Totally. Um, <laughs> because that, it's that black and white versus that gray, like you're talking about, being able to see the different perspectives is going to be great moving forward. I know it's always a challenge for our spouses sometimes, but they can learn. They can, they can learn. learn. They know totally. how to learn. And I even think, too, that part of me developing empathy for my husband is recognizing when he's in a place to be able to go to that gray and when he just needs to be in the black and white. You know what? I think that is a great point because a lot of times, especially especially if we've been home with the kids or we're overwhelmed and we're waiting for them to come home, you know, a lot of times what we're doing is wanting to like fire questions at them as soon as Mm -hmm. they come home or um, try to like hand off kids. So, you know, people can get some downtime or, Hey, I need help with this. Like we want them to jump in and sometimes they can, and sometimes they can't. Right. Um, Right. And I don't want to lose sight of that, the fact of like, they still have a level of responsibility here. Mm -hmm. We can help make that a little easier by providing them some space. You know, they can let us know up front, hey, today was a bad Mm -hmm. day. You know, there's both sides. One thing that's really worked for us, and this has been something that we've learned since having a baby, Mm -hmm. is I... I think providing like structure around that. And so I know when he gets home, he needs 30 minutes to unwind, whether that's building something in the garage, watching TV, playing a video game, whatever his unwinding is. Mm -hmm. And so we have kind of structure around that. So it's not just me um, boiling inside that he's not helping me after I've been with the baby all day. I know that this is his downtime to recuperate and then he's going to come back. 
That is awesome. So you establish that up front. Mm-hmm. So there's no, there's no misconceptions or miscommunication about what's going to happen. It's, right. it's kind of that, okay, I know this is the ritual. This is what happens. And after 30 minutes, then he's going to step back in. So you set both of you up for that success. Mm-hmm. Um, and know what's going to happen. That way it eases anxiety. There's, that's so helpful. That is great. Yeah. And I think what made us do that is I think that naturally I kind of just assume the worst, like it's on his, like he's intentionally not helping me or, um, doesn't want to spend time with me when that's not at all. That's on his mind. He just needs a few minutes to check out. That's exactly. Yeah, Totally. That is awesome. And it's so helpful for people to know those kinds of things. I, I, I appreciate you sharing your story Thank with you. that and, and sharing the parenting. Um, being, being a new parent is a huge transition and you sharing kind of how you're making that work will help other people as well. So thank you. Yeah, thank um, you. Now you are in Orange County and yes. you're at the Center for Individual and Family Therapy. I um, am. Tell me a little bit about who you like to work with. If somebody feels connected, they're like, I want to go talk to her. Like, <laughs> what? Tell me a little bit about who, who is your population that you like to work with. Yeah, so I love to work mainly with individuals. Um, I don't work a ton with couples in this season of my life, um, but I like to work with individuals who are struggling with anxiety, with self-harm. And then I absolutely love to work with both first responders and uh, their spouses, uh, but more on an individual basis. And so either or. And then I really love even the college age um, group as well. Very good. I love that before we got online talking, you were saying that you like to walk with people mm-hmm. through their journeys. And, and I just thought that was so eloquently put that, you know, I, when I think of that visualization of walking, somebody walking with me, I feel supported and encouraged and listened to and heard. And mm-hmm. I just thought, I thought that was really cool the way you said that. So I wanted to, I can see if you're walking with, um, first responder spouses or first responders themselves, you're helping to ease their anxiety or their struggles. Their, I mean, depression to me, I always say anxiety and depression are married. Oh, absolutely. Um, I've they, yet to see one without the other. And, and their baby is anger. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Because anger That's is always way. a product of those two things. So yeah. Totally. So, totally. So if they want to get, if somebody wants to get in touch with you, how would they get in touch with you? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, for counseling and for therapy services, they can go to uh, my website, which okay. is siftcounseling.com, and that's C I F T counseling.com. Stands for Center for Individual and Family Therapy. And then on a more personal level, if if they're not seeking out counseling services, um, they can find me on Instagram at Candice Hutton, K A N D I S H U T T O N. And then I also have a blog for uh, police wives, which is code31.com, and that's the number 31. And what does code 31 mean? Yeah, so code 31 is a name that I made up. Um, Code just stands for police code. I thought it sounded kind of law enforcement-y. And then 31 is after Proverbs 31, which is um, the scripture on a wife of noble character. Oh, wow. So there's a lot of meaning behind that. I know yes. I went to your blog at one point in time and you had a great article. I want to say about being lonely um, or the anxiety. Yes. It was about anxiety or both. Yes. Um, I think I've had both. So I had one okay. on anxiety and then one on being lonely while they're in graveyards. Oh, wow. Graveyard That's right. The graveyard shift. Very yes. good. So check out Candice's blog, um, connect with her over Instagram if you want to. And if you're interested in doing some personal work and you're in the Orange County area, you can um, get a hold of her via the website, which was ciftcounseling.com. Yes. Yes. And then I also have a psychology today page um, where people can email me as well through that page. Okay. So they just, they would just Google your name and psychology today would pop right up. I bet. Yes. And on there, on the left-hand side, I think it has like your, you could click on the website. It would take you to the SIFT 
counseling website or you can send her an email that way too. Yes. Very good. Well, Candace, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate your time and um, it was great to talk to you. Um, any parting words of wisdom for anybody? Thank you for having me. And I think my words of wisdom would be, um, and I'm learning this, I'm no expert in this, but um, to give your first responder the benefit of the doubt um, because they, they go through a lot day in and day out. They do. Thank you so much. And we will see you next time. Thank you.